Dear students, let us continue learning the course Automata Theory and Computability. We are in the second module, session 2. The topics covered in this session are Klein's Theorem and Applications of Regular Expressions. Myself, Dr. Suresh R.D. from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering of Kendra Engineering College, Bantwad, Mangalore. First, the Klein's Theorem. The statement says that finite state machines and regular expressions define the same class of languages. That is either the finite state machines or regular expressions. Whatever you are going to write, they are equal. They are equally powerful. To prove this one, there we have the two theorems over here. Any language that can be defined with the regular expressions can be accepted by some finite state machines. And so is regular. That is we can have a we have, we have written a regular expression the same thing can be converted into a finite state machine over there the second theorem says that every regular language that is every language that can be accepted by some deterministic finite state machine can be defined with a regular expression that is the conversion from a finite state machine to the regular expressions these two topics we are going to learn in detail that is conversion from regular expressions to finite state machine and the other one is conversion from finite state machine to regular expressions. First, let us start building a finite state machine from the regular expression. The theorem says for every regular expression, there is an equivalent finite state machine. That is any language that can be defined with a regular expression can be accepted by some finite state machine. So is a regular. The proof will be done with the help of construction. Fine. So let us begin the proof. First, if we have a single alphabet, then how we are going to write just A, B, C like that. We used to have a single alphabet over there. How to have the finite states machine for that one? We will have one start state and one final state. On that input character, we are going to move to the final state. If the input that a regular expression is null, Null means what? Nothing. In that case, what happens? We have only one state and nothing we are having. So no final state. So that will be your null cases. If I have the epsilon, epsilon means what? On nothing, I should accept. On nothing, I should go to the next state. On nothing, I should accept. So that is have a single state and that itself will be my final state. One thing you have to remember, null star is your epsilon. So this is a very important point in all the proof. Null star is a epsilon. So that is a, this is the case, the third case. That is we have only one state and that state itself will be our final state. This will be for the cases where we have a single alphabet or an alphabet we have a string of length zero or we have we don't have anything that is a null cases. Fine. These are the three cases. Let us extend the, our proof. We have two finite state machines. Let the, the machines be M1 and M2. So now I need to make the union among them. That is alpha is a one regular expression. We need to make alpha by making the union of a beta union gamma. If language accepted by beta and the language accepted by gamma, if they are like regular, then the union of these two regular is also regular. The proof is a quite simple one. So we have the two finite state machines M1 and M2. So that is the first state machine is defined. Let it be defined with the M1, which is having the start state S1. And second state machine be the M2, which is having the start state S2. So now in this case, what we'll do is we'll introduce one more state. Let it be S3. Now we'll make that state as the start state. And we connect S1 and S2 from S1 on epsilon. That is epsilon means nothing. That is either I can take the path from M1 or I can take the path from M2. That is a R operation. How that R can be done? On nothing, I can go to either S1 or the S2. 
So now what will be our resultant machine, which is our new start state, the new start state is your S3. Earlier we used to have the K1 and K2, these are the set of states in the machine M1 and M2. Now we had one more state, that, that is a S3 over there. Then the input alphabets remains the same thing. Transition 3, we are having the, adding the two more transitions. What are the transitions? S3 and Epsilon, we will go to S1. S3 and Epsilon, we can go to S2. Then next will be your Delta 3 we have done. Now the new start state is S3. What are the final states? The accepting states of M1 and the accepting states of M2 will be the new set of final states. So this is how the conversion from this is how the conversion for the union operation. Then let us see the next. This is for concatenation operation. The concatenation is similar to that of your union but with a slight change. So now I need to join the missions M1 and M2. So earlier S1 is the start state of M1, S2 is the start state of M2. So now I need to join end to end. That is M1 is the first one, M2 is the second one. I need to join them. What we will do, all the accepting states of M1, we connect them to the starting state of S2. I think I am clear. What we have done, all the accepting states of M1, we are connecting to the start state of S2 on Epsilon. So that will make the concatenation. It will join these two machines. That is from M1, we can go to M2 on Epsilon. So now what is the new start state? New start state will be your only S1, not S2 now. The new start state of the concatenation is only S1, not S2. Then next one, the transitions. What are the transitions we have introduced? What are the transitions we have introduced? From the accepting states of M1, we are connecting to the start state of S2. That you can see over here. Q on Epsilon, we are, we are going to S2. What is the Q? Q is the, belongs to the A1. What is A1? A1 are the accepting states of the first mission M1 over there. This is how we make the concatenation over there. This is how we make the concatenation. Then the next operation will be the star operation. So star stands for zero or more occurrence. So to have that star operation, we have the mission, let it be M1. What we'll do is uh, on nothing we should accept. First case, star means zero or more. For zero cases, what we'll do is we have a star state, S2, that itself will make it as a final state. Means on nothing we can have the, it will be get accepted. Next from S2, we can go to the star state of the mission S1 on Epsilon. Then from the accepting states, we can go to S1, means this is for any number of cases. Any number of cases, we can go for uh, repeating them. So this will be for your star operation. Star means whatever, uh, star is a zero or more occurrence. How will we process that one? As we have seen here, that is, uh, we are uh, introducing the one more state, uh, that is S2, along with the states of the M1, that is K1. Then we are adding the transitions. What are the transitions we are adding over here? The transition will be your S2 on Epsilon. We can go to S1 along with that one. Or from all your final states, we can go to your previous start state. That is Q on S Epsilon. We can go to S1 over there. So this will be regarding your star. That is your zero or more cases operation. So let us see this example. I have a regular expression B union AB whole star. We need to convert this one to your finite state mission. Fine. How will we do that one? Fine. First, we write the transition for B. That is a start state accepting state on B. Next, I will write for A. Next, I will write for B because the second component is AB. Then next, it will be, I will join them. The first mission is joined with the second mission. It is your concatenation. Out of the concatenation, the accepting state for the A will be connected to the start state of the B on Epsilon. I hope it is clear. Accepting state of the A is connected to the start state of the B on Epsilon. So that will make you A concatenated with the B, that is your AB. Fine. For the next operation, I need to make union over there. B union AB. Out of the B union AB, 
i introduce one more start state from that start state i will connect the start state of your b and the ab so i will introduce one more start state from that start state i will connect the start state of b and one more your ab on epsilon so that will make you the union operation over there now to have the star over there b union ab whole star how to have this one so that is a first i will introduce one more start state and that itself i will make it as a final state the first case then next on epsilon i will connect it to your previous start state second phase then next all the accepting states of your missions i will connect it to your previous start state all the accepting cases of your missions i will connect it to your previous start state this is how the conversion from a regular expression to finite state machine will be done the references for the current session are from the textbook alan rich which is the prescribed text book for you people so in this session we learned that both the regular expressions as well as the finite state machines represent the same class of languages that is regular languages and we learned the conversion from a finite regular expressions to the finite state machine in the next session we will learn the conversion from a the reverse of it that is from a finite state machines to the regular expressions thank you